So good afternoon of, for my behalf also. So my name is Sanna Siltanen and, and, and as mentioned, and I represent Immunodiagnostic Finland, a Finnish distributor company. And as Thomas mentioned, we have just started collaboration with Varsom Safetor, who is uh, uh, providing great solutions for NGS data analysis. So, but the, for the first part, I will shortly introduce our company and the solutions we have for NGS. So let's start. Immunodiagnostic is a Finnish distributor company which has been working in the field of clinical diagnostics, research and microscopy over 36 years now. We are part of Swedish Adelaide Corporation and we have three offices in Hamelina, Espoo and Oulu. And we have a great uh, highly educated staff over 35 of us here uh, making great and excellent customer service for you. And we are ISO certified company, of course. We have been working within the clinical diagnostics. I, I represent the life science research team, but here are some brands uh, we distribute within the diagnostic segment. I think some of them are familiar to you. But with, within the NGS portfolio, which I am responsible for, we have several options for the wet lab and data analysis or from a different kind of suppliers. So we import Finland uh, solutions for DNA sequencing, so library preparation regions for, for example, whole genome sequencing, whole exome sequencing. Then, of course, solution for RNA sequencing, if you want to do expression profiling from your samples, solutions for methylation sequencing, and then targeted panels, which I'm going to now uh, focus in more detail. So we have uh, high performance NGS panels, whichever is your sample type or uh, assay type or analysis type. So for example, if you are doing oncology research, research and diagnostics or work in a genetics department, uh, for and doing solid tumor profiling or cancer risk assessment, uh, we have a different kind of uh, optimized panels for that. And all these panels can also be made custom made for you. So uh, these are the themes we work within. So uh, within the portfolio of these targeted panels, we offer two kinds of solutions. So first, multiplex PCR-based amplicon panels, and then also hybrid adjacent capture panels uh, for human uh, exome analyzing pan cancer and inherited diseases. But this uh, part I will skip now and uh, focus only on these multiplex PCR-based amplicon panels. And we have two suppliers for these, Swift Bioscience and Paragon Genomics. And all of these, both of these uh, suppliers, uh, they offer like all inclusive option for you to make the libraries in a better lab. So all the regions needed to make the library. So prim primers, library preparation regions, dual indexed adapters, and also the purification bead if you wanna have those also. So it's a really nice uh, uh, all inclusive and thus cost-effective solution for your needs. So what we have here, I have here only a list of these. So of course, there is a lots of detailed info uh, and of course the gene lists and so on uh, behind this. But I wanna just want to mention what we have here. So for cancer gene analysis, we have two different kind of two size of uh, uh, pan-cancer hotspot profiling panels, panels for lung cancer, colorectal cancer, EGFR, uh, pan panels for Lund syndrome, comprehensive TP53 analysis, and within the genetics part, myeloid panel, BRCA1 and 2, and PALP2 panel, and then also a hereditary cancer panel, which now actually had, had been updated, up, updated to have only two pools within the workflow. So that's, that's a really nice new thing to shorten the for workflow very much. And then there's also mitochondrial disease panel, CFTR panel, and within the cancer uh, analysis, 
next month, so November, there is coming 500 gene tumor mutation burden panel. So that's, that's exciting and interesting. And these panels are available as three different sizes of the kits. And just to mention, if you, have, if you are working somehow with the uh, microbial analysis, we have a really nice comprehe comprehensive panel uh, cover covering whole the 16S and ITS, 16S gene together with the ITS 1 and 2. And then also from Swift Bioscience, there's a sample tracking panel and to, uh, to involve within your workflow. So what kind of panels these are? What are the specific issues with these? So the workflow, it is really easy and fast. So from two to three hours only. And most of the panels, all the multiplex PCR regions are in a single tube. Some of them are two, three uh, pools, but most of them only within single tube workflow. And input DNA, where you start from, can be as low as 0 0.1 or 1 nanogram. And these are designed for germline and somatic variant de detection, as mentioned. And these are really working well. They provide high on-target percentage and a coverage uniformity. And you can detect variants which are re really rare, like down to 1% allele frequencies. And the uh, panels, which include unique molecular identifiers, you can go down to 1.0 frequency, allele frequency. And these panels, you can use them with, the, with your Illumina sequencing uh, instruments. And of course, some of them are also working with ion torrent also. And sample types, where you start from, can be anything between genomic DNA, FFPE, cell-free DNA, fresh and frozen tissue. So you just extract the DNA and start with the workflow. So here you can see the workflow with the Swift Bioscience portfolio. So as you can see, it is really simple and single tube workflow as mentioned. You extract the genomic DNA, you do the one PCR reaction, it includes all the primers to amplify your genes, your targets of interest. And then you have a, a adapter ligation step. And then after two hours, you have a dual indexed Amplicon library ready for sequencing. And within the Paragon genomics portfolio, it's a bit, bit similar uh, one step uh, in addition, addition to this, but still only three hour protocol. And then uh, just to mention a specific issue, if you are investigating blood samples, so liquid biopsy, and want to have uh, some assays for that, I want to mention this high sensitivity panel from Swift Biosciences. So it includes hotspots from these four genes here. So EGFR, BRAF, KRAS, and NRAS. And uh, so there's totally 14 amplicons within this. And in, that, in addition, for the cell-free DNA uh, analysis, I want to mention this UMI lung cancer panel from Baragon Genomics, which is really an uh, optimized solution for you to actually detect the variants within these specific samples. And in addition, if some of the gene lists, for example, within the hotspots panels or some specific panel within the catalog, if you are not uh, fine with that, you can edit the catalog panels or design totally your own. So you just can, you ju can just bring us the gene list or the uh, SNP list. I want to uh, take a deeper look on this and our suppliers will make all the design and all the regions for you. And you can, uh, they can multiplex up to 20,000 amplicons in each reaction. So you can have a really wide range of multiplex PCR-based panels. And this ha has also, of course, 
high on target rates and coverage uniformity. And you can have these quite fast. The delivery time for the custom panels is only four to six weeks from your acceptance. And the catalog panels, you can have them like after one or two weeks. And these custom panels, uh, we provide them also as, as an all-inclusive solution. So there's everything needed, ev all the wet lab regions needed for you to make the library ready for sequencing. And then now we have this great uh, uh, collaboration with uh, Varsom. So we can now offer a bundled solution for also for analyzing the NGS data. So this is the uh, missing part of the puzzle, puzzle now. So from immunodiagnostic, we can now provide you the total workflow for NGS, making the libraries and analyzing them, the NGS data. So I will thank you on my behalf also uh, at, at this point and we'll let the screen for Thomas. But as mentioned, this was a really short overview in the beginning of this webinar. So just to give you uh, some kind of introduction on what we have, but of course you wanna know more of, more of the details of these products. So just please contact me or uh, visit the supplier web pages or our, our web pages or call me. I, I'm here to help you. Thank you. All right, so thank you very much Sana introduction to your company. Uh, again, my name, my name is Thomas Gusera. I'm the director of business development at Safeter at Varsom. Uh, I'm going to start screen sharing in a few seconds, right? Here it is. So here's my presentation about Varsom and about our company. Uh, I just forgot to mention that you know, there is also a section for questions and answers. So uh, whenever you have a question, please paste it and post it in, the, in that section. And I will try to answer these questions you know, during, during my presentation here. All right. Um, so we are Safeter. We are Safeter. We are a bioinformatics and precision medicine company based in Switzerland, in, in Lausanne, and we are on the market since the year 2014. And we have several, actually several offices around Europe. So our headquarters lies in Switzerland. That's, that's where we have our physical servers located. However, we also do have a number of offices around Europe, such as in London, in Barcelona, for example, or in, in Greece, in Athens. And what we do, is we develop we are developing tools for uh, processing and interpretation of NGS data for clinical purposes. And to that end, we have created Varsom. Varsom it's a free platform. You can try it anytime you feel like it. And it's a basically search engine. It's a knowledge base. You can think of it as a, a Google of genomics. That's the way we like to think about it. So what Varsom does is that it aggregates and cross-references publicly available data such as ClinVar, VBSNP, NOM-ID, Ensemble, RevCDG, Somatic Data Resources, PMKB, and so on and so on. So at the moment, to date, we have integrated over 35 data resources, cross-referenced and matched together into a single cohesive knowledge base where you can look up a comprehensive annotation data for your variants as well as for genes, phenotypes, and diseases. So this is the free platform. I'm going to show you the real thing in a while. However, that's not all, right? On top of the free platform, we have built a clinical tool called Varsom Clinical. And so Varsom Clinical, it's indeed a complete solution for interpretation of NGS data, starting from FASTQ or VCA, and it takes you all the way to the clinical report. And you can process any kind of NGS data, be it a gene panel, customized gene panel, off the shelf, CAD panel, such as SWIFT Biosciences or Polygon Genomics panel, uh, e exome, genome, you name it. Simply said, you know, any kind of NGS data, DNA sec. So at the moment, uh, we have number of pipelines for, for DNA sec. And uh, so, welcome clinical. 
It's a clinically certified platform. It's got CEIDD marking for in vitro diagnostic devices, so it can be used in clinical settings. And also the platform is becoming HIPAA compliant by the end, before the end of the year, we are also going to be HIPAA compliant. It's for US customers. That's not really important for European customers. Uh, of course, we are also important, uh, we are also compliant with GDPR and our company is also certified with the two ISO certificates, uh, one for data quality or quality management systems and the other one for data in information security. Because at the end, we are working with sequencing data of real, real persons, you know, so data security and privacy or is of a paramount importance to us. So with what some clinical, you can process and interpret your data in four simple steps. So as I've just mentioned, we are a company based in Switzerland, and that's also the place where we have our physical server located under our full control. So we don't use in any commercial cloud such as uh, Google or Amazon. Instead, we have our own uh, physical server in Switzerland. And that's where you as our client are supposed to upload, you know, the raw sequencing data, fast few files or ECF files. So at the moment, we accept only Illumina sequencing data when it comes to FastQ. When it comes to the VCF, you can upload any kind of VCF file as long as it conforms to, to the standards for VCF files. So you can upload, you know, a VCF file from Bio, Thermofisher or Ion Torrent, for example. In the second step, you can run the pipeline. So we have we offer a wide range of pipelines covering pretty much all the use cases in clinical settings. So you can you can run a pipeline for a somatic samples, germline samples, for couples, trios. You can perform you know a segregation kind of studies, uh, uh, somatic versus germline sample comparison, uh, including a pipeline for copy number variation and structural variation. Uh, Warsum Clinical doesn't come with a license. Yeah. It, it runs it runs on our physical server in Switzerland and you access it over the internet using your, web, your uh, website browser. And so you don't need to install anything locally. Although it's also possible for large volume customers, we can also do like a local installation on premises. However, you know, for most of our clients, uh, we, we use our home physical server in Switzerland. And in the last step of the process, you may generate a clinical report, which is fully customizable, as you will see. And also, of course, I'm going to perform a full demonstration in a while. So speaking of sensitivity and precision, of our pipelines, you can see it, it's it's over 99.8% for SNPs and indels, and these are not made up numbers, these are the results from the precision contest. And so precision context, you can think of it as a, a, a bioinformatics, you know, a, a competition, competition for bioinformatics companies where you can benchmark your, your pipeline. And it's organized by FDA, the Food and Drug Administration Office. And so this is where we regularly participate. And uh, these results, these numbers are the results uh, from the latest uh, competition run. Uh, speaking of our uh, client base, uh, we are obviously well established in Europe. Uh, we have number of clients pretty much in all all the European countries, we are uh, very well represented in Switzerland, in Spain, in the Czech Republic, but also in other European countries. Um, and we do have actually also a presence on the global level. So we have a number, a number of customers uh, in the US, in, in Latin America, uh, Middle East, uh, Asia. We are now getting close of traction in Asia, in Southeast Asia. So although we are still, you know, a young company, you know, to say five or six years, we are on the market for six years, six years, we have uh, already a global presence. However, that doesn't stop us from providing personalized services. In fact, we always like to be, you know, as close as possible to our clients. You know, we really like to provide customized, customized services and you be your partner. Um, there are two ways how you can how you can use basically Barson Clinical. You can use it either 
as the bundled solution or as the standalone solution. So when it comes to the bundled solution, what we do here is that, uh, you know, we work very closely together with SA manufacturers, such as uh, Biosciences, Paragon Genomics, Forbases, for example. And what we do is that we bundle our products and services together. The SA, the chemicals and regencies, bundled with, with our bioinformatics, you know, tools and delivered together as a, as a complete, as a indeed complete solution, starting, you know, with the wet lab procedures and you know, ending with, with a clinical report. So that's a one way how you can use it as the bundled solution. However, you can use it also as a standalone solution for any kind of NG sample be the exome, genome, customized, essay, you know, you name it. And of course, we also do have like a number of other, you know, partners in the pipeline, uh, Nonacus, Divisor, Selenix, and so on. And recently we have started, you know, our new, you know, exciting collaboration with, uh, with Immunodiagnostics, uh, who, is, who has become our distributor for, for the Finland, and so we are really, you know, close, you know, we would like to really work, you know, as closely as possible with you. So immunodiagnostics, you know, shall be your first uh, point of contact should you have any questions, you know, or, or you know, or issues or support queries, because they are you know, familiarized very well with all our tools. Um, however, we are always available, you know, for, more complex questions and we are always, you know, providing trainings and we provide documentation and we also provide you know, the sub second level of support for, for, for more, more complex issues. Okay, so this is just a very quick introduction to, to Safeter and to, to, to our products, the free platform and to Varsom Clinical. All right, so now here you can see the real thing. Varso. So Varso is a knowledge base and community. As I, as I try to explain, what Varso does is that it aggregates, you know, publicly available data, currently over 35 data resources, and in, then in turn, it allows you to perform queries against it. So you can look up RSI, you can, you can look up variants using RSIDs, using chromosomal position, using AGVS terms. You, know, you can look up genes, phenotypes, publications. So really, it works as a full text search, a bit, a bit of like uh, Google. Here, you can see an example of a result page for a one particular variant in a BRAP gene. So first, you can switch between two reference genomes, AG 1938, and then at the beginning here, you can see the common information for the variant, chromosomal position, reference sequence, you know, and so on. Here, you can see something really important, and this is the automated interpretation of pathogenicity according to ACMG guidelines. So here, I'd like to stop for a while and tell you a little bit more because this is, uh, you know, uh, really important part of our products and services. So, so our implementation of ACMG guidelines, it's, it's very robust, right? It's based on top of the data coming from 35 data resources linked together. So it's a, it's a, very, it's a very solid implementation of ACMG, ACMG guidelines. Also, it's very transparent implementation of ACMG guidelines because for each particular ACMG criterion, you can see, you know, the explanation in a human readable format, right, for each rule. So here it tells you why given criterion fired or didn't fire. So you can always review each rule and, you know, possibly make your own uh, judgment call. Uh, most of the rules have been fully automated. However, not all of them. In certain cases, it's you who has to make the judgment call based on your based on your specific knowledge for the patient right so for example such as patient history or family history information about allele segregation and so on so that's why you can always you know trigger additional criterion such as pbs1 and now you can see that the verdict has been updated 
and so you can always you know uh, modify the list of criteria and you can also for example select you know the transcript for annotation purposes which may affect you know of course you know to final verdict as well uh, we are also in the process of implementation of AMP guidelines for somatic samples. This is this is coming uh, before before the end of this year. Okay, going farther down the page, here you can see the region browser. Uh, this is the gene landscape, you know, uh, which which gives you an idea about the whole gene, about what's going on here. So there is a number of pathogenic variants likely pathogenic variants, right? So there is a probably a mutation hotspot here. And for each individual variant here, you can see the supporting evidence coming from all these FSD5 data resources such as ClinVar, DBSNP, ICGC, Caviar, Uniprot, and so on. Uh, one sum is not only, you know, the it's not only about the public data, it's also about the community. So uh, on Varsam, we have currently over 200,000 users globally using the platform every day. And so that's also the reason why we have a growing number, you know, a substantially growing number of contributions coming from our global community. And so Varsam users link publications, link functional studies, classify variants, start discussions, you know, start collaborations. So this is also a really important aspect of Varsom Clinical, of Varsom, sorry, and actually we manually review all the contributions here. And then in turn, we leverage these contributions for certain ACMG criteria here, such as, for example, PP5. So, for example, here you can see that in the case of PP5 criterion, you can see that it takes into consideration ClinVar entries. However, also the entries from our global community. And so these contributions coming from our global community are you know, absolutely unique to Varsom, right? That, that constitutes a, a unique of a layer of data which is nowhere else uh, to be found. In fact, you know, our main advantage actually compared you know, to other players on the market is the interpretation part of the pipeline when it comes to the interpretation. I mean, to do the uh, read, read uh, alignment and read calling, there are you know tools and services available. Uh, so this is not uh, really you know, this is not a bottleneck. Where where the bottleneck is is the is the tertiary analysis, right? I think you would agree. Is that's the interpretation part of the pipeline, and that's where we are, you know, really really strong. And that's precisely the reason why we have created this free community-driven uh, knowledge base to be able to provide you know, as much comprehensive notations as much as possible. Okay, going further down, as you can see, you know, quite a few contributions from our global community. You might be one of our users. Uh, here you can see the list of publications coming from ClinVar, Civic, PMKB, so PMKB is, for example, quite interesting uh, data resource. It stands for a precision medicine knowledge base, a manually created list of variants you know, from a whale Cornell Institute in New York, which also includes uh, links for clinical trials and, and links for, for drugs specific to variants and the genes. Here you can see the structural variant browser with all the transcripts, you know, in that, in that, in that specific region here. The transcripts coming from Decipher, DGV, Exact, or ClinVar. Here you can see how well these transcripts overlap with each other. Uh, transcripts, RefSeq transcripts, ensemble transcripts, ClinVar entries. So this is a particularly well-studied variant in a BRAP gene. So that's the reason why there is a quite a few contributions or entries in ClinVar. Uniprot variants, allelic frequencies from GNOME AD broken down by ethnicities and gender. PMKB again, this is the precision medicine knowledge base, see tracks, clinical trials, ICGC, somatic data resource. Also, Cosmic, Civic, 
genomic data command. This is a clinical, clinical database. And at the end of the page, you can see a number of uh, pathogenicity scores or in silico pathogenicity scores and a number of conservation scores. So indeed, as you can see, on a single page, you get a wealth of annotation data for, for your variants. And also the important uh, you know, aspect of Warsaw is that you keep the data here always, always up to date as much as possible. So, okay, so this is our free platform, our uh, community and knowledge base. You are very welcome you know, to try it anytime you like it, anytime you feel like it. All right, on top of that, we have built a Warsaw Connect the clinical tool for interpretation of engine data starting from past year or this year. And so here it is. So first, of course, you have to upload the data, right? So uh, here you can see the user interface for Barcelona Clinical where you can upload your sequencing data. So you can either start, you can either upload your data directly, directly from your computer using your website browser, or uh, there is also you know, an a API endpoint allowing you to upload the data automatically. In fact, for every step in the process, there is an API endpoint. You can also use uh, the base space connector from Illumina, uh, which allows you to streamline the data directly from the base space directly to Warsaw Connector without the need to download and upload the data. So this is also coming by the end of this year. Uh, so once you upload the data, you can launch, you can proceed and you can launch the analysis. So you can either start from FastQ or VCF here. So let's start from FastQ. And you have to specify the details of the pipeline, right? So for example, whether it's a single sample, whether it's a family trio, for example, or a couple of or carrier screening, or whether it's a generic multi-sample uh, multi analysis for extended family or for small cohort studies. Mm. Here we have to specify whether it's a germline or tumor sample. Here it's to specify the assay. And so here in this drop down list, you can see a number of off the shelf assays, such as Swift Biosciences, for example. As you can see, there is a number of assays already available for Swift Biosciences, who is a really great partner for us. We have really nice uh, functional you know, collaboration with them. Or, for example, Paragon Genomics. Oh, it's not in the list. So, yeah. This is only a demo account, so yeah. You know, if it was a production account, you would see also, you know, uh, there's also a uh, true site one from here, from Angeland for you know, exons and so on. Remember, you can process any kind of NGS data, gene panels, customized assays, exons, genomes. So what we need in those cases is the bed file from you. Here, here you can specify optionally the ethnicity of your sample, you can provide sequencer details. You can select the reference genome, AG 1938, the variant list, uh, gene list. You can, for example, you know, here you can decide whether you want to perform a full analysis or gene list based analysis. So, what I mean is, and for example, here you can see, here you can set up a gene list. So, there are basically two ways how you can set up a gene list. You can either, you know, set it up manually by copying and pasting the list of genes. Or you can take the advantage of HPO terms, the human phenotype ontology terms. So here you just type in the phenotype of your interest, such as you know, scarpar osteolysis. And so here you can see this phenotype is associated, oh, in this case, with only two genes. That's not a really good example. Anyway, this is, this is the way how you can set up you know, a specific uh, list of genes for a specific set of uh, phenotypes very quickly. So this is the automated way of uh, setting up a gene list. And then in turn, you can use it as a parameter for your analysis here. And so actually the use case for this is to be able to avoid incidental findings, especially when it comes to a larger data set, such as exons or genomes. And on the left side here, you have to specify the sample details. You have to specify the sequencing data you have uploaded previously. Sample identifier, you can also provide the additional sample description. 
can again type in the phenotypes of your patient according to HPO. So again, just number of phenotypes and diseases, and later in the process you can use these terms for uh, variant uh, filtering and variant prioritization. Once you set up all these details, you, you hit the start button and the, the process starts. So once the process you know, is finished, it takes, you know, speaking of performance, when it comes to hygiene panels, the process takes between five and 10 minutes, depending on the size of your sample, and exome can take uh, up to half an hour. A whole genome takes about uh, four, four hours, just for your information. But of course, it always depends on the size of your sample, of the, of the sequence, it depends on the sequencing depth and so on. Um, yeah, here, we're, you know, if, 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 it's, if it's a family tree, or for example, you have, to, you have to specify the details, you know, for each individual sample here. And you, you are also specified, you know, whether it's affected or unaffected. Okay, so let's go to the results. Uh, so once the analysis is finished, you can, you can access the results here. So I'm going to show you a whole genome sample to start with. Because this allows me, you know, to demonstrate all the filtering capabilities very nicely. Uh, okay, so here, here we go. So here you can see the variant table with with the variants, you know, identified in that whole genome sample. So there are almost five million variants in this whole genome sample. The variants are sorted by pathogenicity, the pathogenic and likely pathogenic variants first. Uh, for each variant, you can see the variant name, variant type. This is the column for custom classification. I'll get back to it in a while. This is the classification according you know, to the ACMG guidelines. We classify the variants according to ACMG. For each variant here, you can see the list of uh, ACMG criteria, uh, for which fired for each individual variant, the AGV is the exon number, the gene associated with the variant, mode of inheritance, function, the variant function, whether it's a free, free UTR, internet splicing, encoding variant. So here, for the purposes of this column here, we annotate uh, annotate the variant against all the transcripts available. Zygosity, whether it's heterozygous, homozygous variant frequencies, it's the allelic frequency according to the ethnicity specified in the step before, allelic balance, the percentage of reads supporting the given verdict and coverage, which is, a, which is actually the number of reads supporting the given variant. The coverage, it's a link, so you can click on it and it takes you to the JBrowse view where you can see the graphic representation of reads. Yeah. So, for example, here you can see exon number six. So here you can really easily see whether this particular exon you know, has been has been fully covered or not. Okay, where is it? Yeah, here. Okay, and then for each variant, you can see a number of tabs to the right, as well as to the bottom. As, uh, beneath the variant table. So, for example, here you can see the allele frequencies, clinical data, transcripts, genes, HPO terms, cross reference samples. I'll get back to it in a while. Nearby variants, audit trail. So, uh, as a part of the certification procedure, you may uh, need like an audit trail, you know, to be able to audit all the actions, all the actions performed. By, by the users in your account here. So that's, that's what audit trail is for. And then, you know, beneath the variant table here, you can see again the ACMG grid with all the ICMG criteria, explanations, you know, very similar to the free platform. The region browser, again, you know, the same thing as on the free platform, ClinVar entries, cosmic entries, caviar, analytic frequencies, ICGC, GDC, genomic, data comments, in silico predictions, conservations, or publications, and also in certain cases you can access, you know, here, the contributions from our global, global community. Okay, now, so as I mentioned before, we classify the variants according to ACMG guidelines. So, for example, in the case of this variant here, you can see this is a pathogenic variant according to ACMG. However, if you don't agree with it for whatever reason, you may reclassify it privately only within your account of Varsam Clinical. So you can click 
the right right button on the mouse and here you can reclassify for example as a benign or likely benign variant if you like and then actually here you can also see you know the username the name of the user who has done this reclassification here uh, you can even set up you know a fully customized classifications such as you know a variant important from a pharmacogenomics perspective or variant that needs to be you know reviewed later or discussed with the lab director any, anything you like and then in turn again you can apply you can apply these custom classifications to your variants here and the important thing you know to remember here is that is that these custom classifications stay with the variant forever unless you change it or remove it obviously and so that also means that uh, whenever you upload a new sample with the same variant you will see the same classification mark yeah so this is something that allows you to build over time your private database of classifications and that's what our clients really like what we can also do you can also in like a take i guess you might have like a manually created list of variants most of our clients do and so what we can do in those cases is that we can take your list of variants and upload it privately only to your account uh, with what some kind of for the purposes of uh, variant classifications uh, what we also do is that we link all your samples together so for example in the case of this variant here you can access you know the cross-reference sample so what we do is that we link all your samples together on the variant level and so here you can see basically where in which sample that this particular variant has been found so far so for example you can see that across across your own samples this variant has been found in a heterozygous form in a two samples in a sample called exome 7 and in this whole genome sample so this is only a demo account again with a limited number of samples however as you upload more and more samples you shall see the list grow here and so this is something that allows you to go back and forth between your past and current cases compared to patient phenotypes and increase the diagnostic yield right it's all about diagnostic yield here uh, we do this sample cross-referencing on two levels on the on the on the across your own samples or and also across all the samples from all the clients however from in those cases we cannot display any sensitive information right but what we can do display we can, what we can what we can display is the number of occurrences of uh, such a variant within our database of samples so it gives you additional clue for variant interpretation and here speaking of acmg uh, we annotate you know uh, against you know the canonical transcript by default but you know should you have your own preference for a transcript you know you can you can send us the list of genes and transcripts you know for your of your preference and then we can you know upload it again to your account and annotate annotate the variants you know against your your specific list of transcripts of course you can always modify you know the final verdict by triggering additional acmg criteria however here you have the option to save it as a menu classification and once you hit the button here you will see a new classification mark in this column here for example here you can see that in this case like a five acmg criteria uh, have been have been modified in so these three these three features the, the custom classifications or reclassifications sample cross-referencing and custom acmg vetting these three features taken together allow you to allow you to build over time your private database of uh, samples and classifications and our clients uh, love it um right um enough said about the dashboard area um, so um, it's a once currently it's a ceivd certified platform it says it's a platform uh, uh, certified for in vitro diagnostics so it comes also with a number of qc reports okay, so for example here you can access a number of qc reports here you can see the basic qc report which summarizes the sample details sequencing details software details used for data processing and, and, and interpretation 
summarization, you know, of the primary and secondary, you know, analysis, the total number of reads, uh, percentage of target, and so on. Summarization according to coverage, you know, the sequencing that summarization according to the pathogenicity, the number of pathogenic and likely pathogenic variants, summarization according to each individual ACMG criterion, uh, according to the function. Yeah, so yeah, that, that's the basic QC report here. Uh, however, there is even more comprehensive uh, coding uh, QC report called the coding coverage report. So here, First, you have to specify, you know, the list of genes. This is a whole genome sample, right? So, you know, without specifying the genes, the report would be really, really, really big. So, so here again, you have to specify the list of genes uh, for which you want to generate a coding, coding coverage report. And once you do that, you get an Excel sheet with a very detailed coding coverage report broken down by individual gene according to the gene list as well as you know according to the chromosomal position exon number and of course you know the sequencing data so this is the place where you can identify the regions with low coverage or regions you know that have been skipped altogether right so this is the place where you want to go should you need to uh, troubleshoot some uh, issues with sequencing for example you can also download here the bump file index bump file so on. Okay, so this is this is the dashboard area. Now, filters. We have a five million variants right here. This is a whole genome sample again. So we did definitely need you know extensive filters, you know, filtering capabilities here. And so we have a number of you know filters available in Varsom Clinical. So here you you can access you know the filters we call uh, dynamic filters. And so with dynamic filters, you can filter you know, based on number of criteria, such as you know, ACMG criteria, allele frequency, in silico uh, prediction score, uh, clinical classification, chromosomal position, pathogenicity, zygosity, function, gene list. Again, you can apply a gene list as a filter. Call status, you can call you know, all the variants that pass or fail QC parameters, QC filters, or you can filter based on you know, analytic balance or based on coverage, and so on. There's a quite a few, quite a few filters available. So just to give you an example how it works. So let's say we want to filter out only rare variants with the frequency less than one percent. So now we are setting up a filter set. A filter set may consist of several filters, right? Such as allele frequency filter, and the other one could be a filter for uh, for pathogenicity for pathogenic and likely pathogenic variants. So now we have two two filters within the filter set. We, we give it give it a name. And so once you set up a filter set, you can use it all over again for all your samples. You can basically set up multiple filter sets, you know, for all the kinds of samples you are analyzing. And then we can apply it. As you can see, everything is happening really fast, right? Don't forget, this is a whole genome sample, you know, five million variants. Uh, and so, using the allele frequency filter here, you can see that we have, you know, uh, filtered out four and a half million variants. And using the pathogenicity filter, we have, you know, filtered out three hundred thirty-nine thousand variants, and we are left with only four, with only four variants in the variant table here. You can always, you know, tri arm trigger or you know deactivate or reactivate any any particular filter here, and to, and the results update dynamically, you know, according to your actions here. And so this is the reason why we call these filters dynamic filters. You can even go one step further, and you can add additional criteria, right? Such as. Uh, filtering based on ACMG for PP5. So now we have three filters within the filter set. Again, let's update the results dynamically. So now you can see we are left with, with only two variants in the variant table here. 
So these are, you know, the dynamic filters. Uh, however, Varsam Connector comes with the even more sophisticated filters called algorithmic filters. So algorithmic filters are very sophisticated. It can be fully customized according to your needs. You can think of it as a, a little specific programs we built for each client according to your specific workflow. Yeah. So this is why I was saying that we like to be as close as possible to our clients. And this is the, this is our actually you know approach how to, how, how, how to do it. So we we can fully customize here you know these algorithmic filters according to your specific needs. And so here you can see a couple of you know common examples of algorithmic filters. So with algorithmic filters, for example, you can do you know, just, just to give you a few examples like identical variants for trios or carrier risk for couples or you can perform compound heterozygous you know, analysis, or you can do segregation kind of analysis for dominant or recessive variants, and so on and so on. So you can always click on the blue circle here and it tells you, you know, how, how the filter works. And remember, these filters can be, can be fully customized according to your specific needs. And so here you can see the results again, you know, for example, I'm going to show you this time an exome trio, uh, actually a tenable variance. So actually here you can see a number of sub analyses, right? So this is the initial analysis. And then with him, you can see a number of sub analyses. And so each sub analyze corresponds to the results of an algorithmic filter. So for example, here you can see the results for for the novel variants in ESO trio. And again, pretty much the same thing, the same dashboard area with the slight differences. For example, here's the zygosity you can see for each individual sample for the child, mother, and father, and the same for allelic balance and coverage. Even in the J browse here, if it was a trio, you would see actually all three samples the child, mother, and father all, all aligned together. Okay. So these are the algorithmic filters. Um, and I think the last missing part, I'm coming to the end. Yeah, yeah coming to the end of my presentation. I'm running out of time, I know. Um, so it's a complex platform, right? But uh, I'd like to show you one more thing. And uh, it's the reporting. So once you filter out the variants based on your criteria, you can proceed and you can generate the clinical report. However, before you can do that, you have to select the variants for the report, right? So this is up to you. You, as the user of the platform, you decide which, which variants are going to be reported. And so once you decide you know, to report this variant, you select it for the export, and right after you can proceed. You can, for example, also download variants in Excel sheet, or you can proceed and you can generate the, call, the, the, cl the clinical report right in Varsom Clinical. So this is the interactive reporting. Okay? A feature, you know, to report can be fully customized. The logo can be replaced. The header can be also updated with your data. You can update the colors, fonts, and sizes. You know, the whole look and feel of the report can be fully customized according to your branding policy. So basically what you need to do is to set up a template. And once you set up a template for it, you can use it all, all over again. So it's indeed interactive uh, kind of reporting. And so here on the left, you can see widgets. You know, you know, the pieces of data available uh, for each type of sample. Yeah. So for example, here, uh, and you, you, you have a full control over it, right? So you can decide you know, which, 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 which kind of data you want to actually include in the report. So for example, you can include you know, the information about the variant, you can include the information for the gene, you can include information uh, like a list of list of drugs, list of clinical trials, and also you know list of list of preferences. So everything is fully editable. So here's the oh, I forgot to include actually the content area. So here's the content area where 
you may provide your specific you know, content, specific comment for the report. Here's the information about the variant, the transcript, the AGVS notation, gene, exon number, variant name, zygosity. So, so these actually, all these columns again can be uh, you know, can be controlled using the templating system. So you can decide which which columns you want to include information about gene, about genes coming from clinical genomic data resources, uh, information about drugs, clinical trials, and at the end, you know, the list of references. Everything, everything is fully editable. So if you don't like, you know, this this particular publication or these people, you can you can remove it from the list. I'm just joking. Okay, so as you can see, it's fully, fully, fully editable, and once you are done, you know, with it, uh, you can download it as a PDF file or as a doc file. So here you can see a number of examples. Again, this is just you know, the default uh, look and feel. It hasn't been styled properly, but but still, you know, uh, you can see you know, uh, this is a simple report with, uh, you know, the gene description and list of genes, for example. It is, you know, actually, a, and this is actually a real report generated for a Swift Biosciences 56G panel, you know, where you can, again, you know, see all the all the variants that have been reported, clinical, clinical data, uh, information about phenotypes, mode of inheritance, and so on. And uh, this is, probably the most comprehensive report uh, where you can also access some additional additional data for genes and phenotypes as well as you know the list of list of clinical trials so this is the this is the last last uh, part uh, of the process i guess yeah, so as you can see, this is in Watson Clinical, it's a quite complex platform which allows you to process and interpret any kind of NGS data, gene panels, exome genomes. Uh, it, it, doesn't, it doesn't really matter as long as you sequence, you know, on uh, Illumina machine, speaking of fast view. It's a clinically certified platform uh, according to the CEIBD. Um, and speaking of prices, you know, so there is no license what some clinical charges on a per sample basis, depending on the size and type of the sample. When it comes to the bundled solution, remember the bundled solution consists, you know, of you know, all the essay, such as with biosciences essay bundled together with bioinformatics. So in those cases, you know, uh, uh, you basically get you know, the whole thing directly from our distributors, such as immunodiagnostics. So yes, you can, if you uh, purchase the, some kind of uh, like cancer gene panel, you just get uh, like short code to load and open this data analysis option also. So it's really, really easy for you. You get the uh, key to the data analysis together with the with lab kit. Exactly. Yeah. So there is a, something what we call a token which comes, you know, with with the physical package, which is an acti activation code that you are supposed to enter in Warsaw Clinical in order to unlock it for a, a certain number of certain samples. Okay, let's see if we do have questions now. There is a question, maybe. How many data databases? A thirty-five. 35 data resources currently and growing. We constantly keep adding new data resources to our zone and, you know, keeping all the data up to date at the same time. So, Sana, we don't have questions. Yeah, I think it was everything clear. <laughs> yeah, but all right. I I'm think you may have a lot of questions uh, after this, so you will get the presentation as Thomas mentioned, and then you can contact me also, and uh, uh, then we can proceed with that, babe. So thank All you right. for your attention. Great that you uh, participated in the webinar, and I wish you a sunny afternoon, Thursday afternoon now. Yeah, me too. Thank you. Thank you very much for attending our presentation with Sana, and uh, have a good day. Bye-bye.